everyone! Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be ranking every single Naruto arc in a tier list. Wow, that's very creative. Come on, let's go. By the way, subscribe to this channel and like this video, please, okay? So the YouTube algorithm treats me well and everyone gets to know my videos. That would be cool. Okay, let's get going. You guys know how this works. It's just a tier list. It's not very complicated. S to F. Let's go. So the first R coming up with a Land of Waves arc, and I guess the stuff that comes before it as well, which is never really talked about, but it's great. Like the training arc, the first episode, all that, up until the end of the Land of Waves. And this arc is very good. It's a very good arc to begin the series with. It establishes the universe very well. There are more powerful, more interesting stuff that comes after it, but still, it's a very good one. I'll just give it an 8 here. Next, we have the tuning exams. And I don't think it's very controversial to put this arc in S tier. I mean, we had so many amazing moments. We had Rock Lee, we had Gara, Neji, Naruto and Sasuke doing their stuff. The Forest of Death is such an interesting place as well. It's very tense. We thought they're gonna die at every moment. Also, the written exam is low-key one of the best things ever done in shonen anime. It's so creative. It's a different way for the characters to use their powers. It's great. The final round is very good as well. The thing is, they don't really finish, but anyway, this arc deserves to go in S tier. It's so good. And to be honest, I've always kind of considered the tuning exams and the so-called Konoha Crush arc to be the same arc. I kind of feel like the Konoha Crush arc is the final act of the tuning exams, if that makes sense. I don't really treat them separately because they're essentially happening during the same day, in the end at least. And then people t tend to separate these two arcs. I, I guess it makes sense because the focus shifts from the exams to saving the village. But still, this is also pretty damn amazing. I'll have to put this one in S tier, it's so good. The climactic fights that were built up during the entire tuning exams were just very well delivered in the final act, in the Konoha Crush arc, if you want to call it that, so it definitely deserves to go on S tier as well. Now we have the search for Tsunade arc, and if I am to be honest, my favorite part about this arc is when Itachi and Kisame show up and really cause a lot of trouble to the Konoha ninjas, to Kakashi and all that, to Sasuke as well. The part where they search for Tsunade is good, but I've always found the beginning of it more compelling than the end. Not that I think the battle between the sun and this bad or anything, it's just, I guess it's not as good as the beginning. So I'll still put it in A tier because I really like this arc. There is nothing really to complain about it. It's just not my favorite, if that makes sense, but still very good. The Sasuke Retrieval arc, well, I love this arc. It's probably my favorite arc in part one. It's so well made, the anticipation, the build up, and the final battle between Naruto and Sasuke is amazing. Actually, every single fight in that arc is so good. The side characters got some amazing fights. Also, Drunk Lee and then Gara comes in to save him. That's all so good, so well done. All the fights in this arc are amazing and the way it ends is... It's awesome. It's heartbreaking, but it's great. I definitely think this is the best arc in part one, which is high praise because part one also has the tuning exams. But yeah, this arc is great. And now we come to Shippuden. Oh, I guess there isn't the Kakashi Gaiden here. It's a very small arc, but just thinking, I, I would put it probably on B tier just because it's very fast and we don't really get to know Obito that much in that arc. It's more of a preparation for things to come, but still it's decent. Imagine that you know, Kakashi Gaiden would be on B tier. The Kazekage slash Gara retrieval saving whatever arc. I really like this arc, okay? It's very good. I will put it in an A tier. People don't like it because most people just watch the anime and yeah, the anime can drag a lot in the final part of that arc during 
Sakura's fight against Sasori, but especially when Kakashi and Naruto are chasing Dater and when Team Guy are fighting against their doppelgangers. But it's much better done in the manga than in the anime, it's much faster, the pace is quicker, and even though, sure, Sakura's fight against Sasori is long, but it's good, so I don't really care about that. And there are so many good moments in this arc as well. Gara vs. Dater. Chiyo? She was my favorite female character in Naruto, she's awesome, man, and her death is really sad. Whenever she dies and I read or watch the anime or the manga, ah oh man, it's sad. I don't like watching that, but it's amazing. And now we have the Tenchi Bridge arc, which is the arc where Naruto, Yamato, Sai, and Sakura go try to find Orochimaru and then they encounter Sasuke. This is not my favorite arc, to be honest. I don't like Sai as a character, I think he is not very charismatic, I don't really like what they're going for with the character, and they never really pay off because Sai essentially disappears from the narrative after this arc. The only thing he offers to this arc is the mystery about his story, and what's gonna happen with the book? Oh, is he on our side? Is he on Rochimaru's side? That's the only thing going for Sai anyway. And they make a big deal out of Sai in this arc. It's as though Sai is gonna become a very prominent character that I don't really like, and he is never really important later. Also, this arc is very strange because it's the only Naruto arc that doesn't end in a climactic fight. Really. They find Sasuke, they scramble for a couple of seconds, and then that's it. They go away. It's not very satisfying, to be honest. Maybe that was the point, but I kind of think Sasuke should have fought the Four Tails in the end of the arc, because the way it ends is a little bit anticlimactic, and this is not Hunter x Hunter what the author likes to do. Like, oh, let me end the arc in a very subtle, different way to make sure my readers are very surprised. No, this is Naruto, this is real shonen, man. Give me a fight in the end of the arc. So this goes to D tier, honestly. The best part of this arc is Four Tails Naruto vs. Orochimaru, and that's a really good fight. But the rest, well, I also like the jokes Sai makes about Naruto's micro penis. Those are pretty funny, but other than that, nah, this arc doesn't really do it for me. Okay, the Hidan slash Kakuzu arc is uh, pretty good, I would say. I don't know about in B tier. There are some pretty good moments in this arc, but the villains. They are not as good as the other villains. Sure, they are not bad by any means. Kakuzu and Hidan are still interesting, but they pale in comparison to Itachi, Nagato, and other characters that have more compelling motivations. Though there are great moments as well, the Rasen Shuriken, Shikamaru killing slash defeating Hidan, because he doesn't die, but you get what I mean. Also, Asuma dying, even though I never really care too much about Asuma because that was the only arc he ever did anything. I wasn't very attached to him when he died. I think B tier is a fair pick for this arc right here. Okay, this- I am not using the correct picture for this, but assume this is the arc when Sasuke goes around collecting the members of Hebi and then trying to find clues about Itachi's whereabouts. Also, this is the arc with the data of fight. And this arc... Uh, S tier, man. The data of fight is so good. It's amazing. And Hebi Sasuke is probably the coolest character in Naruto. Everything he does is so awesome. <laughs> and I have to put this arc on S tier, honestly. Okay, the Jiraiya the Gallant arc. It's a very good arc. Uh, I, my favorite part of this arc is not really the fight against Spain. The flashbacks are my favorite part, I think. Because the backstory about Nagato, Conan, and Yahiko is very interesting, and Jiraiya's backstory is very interesting as well. The way it connects with the universe and the themes of Naruto being the savior, or maybe Nagato being the destroyer of the world. I'm gonna give it an A tier. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad at all. Okay, Sasuke vs Itachi, obvious S tier. No debate, really. It's an amazing arc, one of the most insane plot twists in anime history, 
And the fight between the two of them is just amazing. I cannot really say anything bad about this arc because it's great. We also get backstory on Madara, which is never bad. Kirin is in that arc as well. It's the first arc we see a Madara also being used at its fullest. So, man, this arc is just amazing. The character work as well, it's awesome. And next, we have another S tier arc, the Pain arc. I cannot not put it in S tier because so many great things happen in the Pain arc. Naruto's fight against Pain is so climactic, it's so amazing. The anime and the manga do a great job in this arc, and it's awesome. When you think Naruto is about to give up and surrender to the Nine Tails, Minato shows up and stops him. That's like one of the most emotional parts. And then when Naruto finally defeats the last path of pain, when he says, give up trying to make me give up, just like Jiraiya did and wrote in his novel, it's just so good. And now we have here the Five Kagi Summit, and I think this is a very underrated arc. It's a great arc, guys. It's awesome. Really, rewatch this arc. I mean, sure, a lot of people don't like Sasuke. Maybe that's why they don't really like this arc, but I'm telling you, it's great. It's awesome. S tier. Not the top of S tier by any chance, but still, it goes on S tier because it's just such a great arc. It expands the universe, it shows different ninjas, Sasuke fights every single Kage, and he is very powerful, very cool, very edgy, sure, but I kinda like that, you know, bad Sasuke. So, S tier for me. The preparations in between the war arc and the Five Kage Summit, this is more of a, you know, an intermediate arc. I don't know the name, if it even has a name, but I guess it's the arc Guy fights Kisame, Conan fights Obito and all that. And it's not bad by any means, but it's not great either. It's more like something where we have to go through in order to get to the war arc. So I'll get I'll give it a B tier. I'll give it a B tier, I'll be fair. And next we have the war arc. So I am counting this as the war arc between the beginning of the war until just before Madara shows up. The first half, I would say. The first half when things weren't escalating to that insane level yet. And a lot of people really don't like this arc. I am not a huge fan either. I think there are some things that really shouldn't even be there. But I think the reason why most people don't really like this arc is because they watched in the anime and the anime was absolutely loaded with filler and of course you're not gonna like that because they put 10 filler episodes for one regular episode and it goes on. The manga is not as bad, not by a long shot, it's much quicker. Thing, there are some things that are actually very interesting. I like Itachi and Nagato versus Naruto and B. I like the four Kage versus Gara, Onoki, and the Alliance. Those are some interesting aspects. The seven swordsmen are whack. Ginkaku and Kinkaku are whack. There are many bad things. And yeah, if you balance it out, I guess I'll give it a C tier. Could be much worse, to be honest. Okay, for this right here, for this Juby picture, I am going to consider the war arc from when Madara shows up until Obito becomes the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. And this part of the manga slash anime, if you don't count filler of course, is amazing guys. It's amazing. It's really, really good. It's in between that point when things start to become really powerful but not yet on absurd god tier universe breaking levels but it's just very interesting and of course Madara is in that arc he's essentially the main character in that arc so I have to give it an S tier because it's just awesome I mean the introduction of Madara alone is one of the best things in Naruto when the manga was coming out it was actually dropping in sales because nobody was really enjoying the work all that much but then Madara shows up and he just revives the franchise from the grave <laughs> it's really good Okay, I'm counting this from when Obito becomes the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails until Madara is stabbed by Zetsu. And this, I think this goes in A tier. I actually quite like this, to be honest. Even though the powers get very out of scale, 
I still like Jubidara versus Naruto and Sasuke, and the Hokage coming back is a very nice touch. Also, Jubidara is cool as hell, and his fight against 8 Gates Guy is amazing as well. Of course, I am not giving an S tier because of the way this arc ends with the worst death in anime history being Madara's, not death, but him becoming Kaguya, it's just absolute stupidness. So, yeah, the ending actually is the worst thing to happen to Naruto, but I can actually count the ending towards the next arc. So I'm definitely going to give this um, third war arc an A tier. And the Kaguya arc obviously goes on F tier because Kaguya is the worst character in Naruto. She comes out of nowhere, she is boring, she doesn't do anything useful. She's just there to be defeated and to launch Naruto and their villains over there. The worst villains ever made, the worst manga ever made, you know, all that stuff already. And I guess there isn't a picture for the actual ending because I consider it a separate affair from Kaguya's fight. Naruto versus Sasuke um, in the end of Shippuden and then the two chapters that follow it. Let's just consider this picture as the ending, because this is a filler arc and nobody cares about it. I would really give the ending a B tier. The fight is cool between Naruto and Sasuke, but it's rushed, in my opinion. There wasn't enough of an aftermath after the war, it was everything so quickly. Kakashi just became the Hokage out of nowhere, and then time skip 15 years, Naruto's the Hokage. And I don't really like that. Uh, especially the last chapter, I don't think the last chapter should have been a time skip. Anyway. I am going to do some changes to those things during my Naruto rewrite, which I hope you guys are watching because it's something that, you know, it's a lot of work and I really like doing that. If you guys want to see how I fix some of these problems that I perceive with Naruto, definitely go check it out. And these three that are left here are filler, um, filler, whatever, the last trash, the filler, the ending of the anime is filler as well, so it's trash. So yeah, these go on F tier. And here's the list. What do you think? Do you agree with it? Comment down below. Also, subscribe to the channel and like this video as well. Thanks so much for watching.